The Wood Whisperer is brought to you by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Well, I'm just enjoying a frosty cold beverage in my brand new Windsor chair. It only took me six hours to build it. Okay, maybe I cheated just a little bit. So believe it or not, this chair came from a kit. In fact, it was the River Bend Windsor chair kit that sold at the woodwork store. Um, they've got four different varieties. They range in price from, I believe, like 300 to 350. And if I'm not mistaken, they're running a sale on these right now. So you can get them as low as $250. You know, this is actually a very interesting project. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on why I think even the average woodworker who has some skills to build this uh, might want to start with a kit. I'll get into a little bit more detail on that later. But for now, I wanna give you a little bit of a tour of a Windsor chair and show you some of the main parts. Um, there's more than meets the eye with a chair like this. There's a lot of history uh, in the design and the aesthetics of it to make it such a comfortable chair. Let's check it out. Windsor chairs are traditionally made with three different species of wood, each chosen specifically for its unique properties. The turnings are made from maple, a wood that turns and holds its shape well perfect for the beautiful, crisp spindles of a Windsor. The bent parts are made from oak, which lends itself well to steam bending. And finally, the seat is made from pine, whose soft fibers make for easy sculpting. The legs of the base splay out side to side and front to back, which not only offers physical support and balance, but also visual. All joints are finished off with wedges, lending incredible strength and durability to a fairly lightweight chair. The kit comes complete with all the parts you'll need to make this chair, but don't be deceived, there's still quite a bit of woodworking to do. I start by gluing together the H stretcher assembly. Next, I use a smoothing plane to flatten the bottom and remove some milling marks and dents. The edges of the seat needed a little work too, and the random orbit sander cleaned things up quickly. To assemble the base, I add glue to all the mortises and start dropping in the legs. The H stretcher assembly is then glued into place and a dead blow hammer helps drive the tenons home. To make sure the legs are inserted as far as they can go, I prop the seat up on a scrap block of wood and tap the legs further into the seat. Now it's time to drive the wedges. A little glue makes this process easier and helps lock things down, but it's the mechanical strength of the wedge that really does all the work with this joint. Also notice the orientation of the wedge with respect to the grain of the seat. The wedge must be perpendicular to the grain or you'll risk splitting the seat in half. The trickiest part of this process is knowing how far to drive those wedges in, and that's where experience counts. My flush trim saw was just taking too long, so I used my dovetail saw to trim the excess. A little sanding afterwards flushes things up nicely. Now it's time to level the chair and trim the legs so that they're all in the same plane. First, I level the chair on the bench using small wedges under each foot. And then I use a sharp pencil taped to a piece of scrap to scribe a cut line on each leg. Each leg is then trimmed by hand. Everything is pretty much rinse and repeat until you get to the arm rail. Now I'm not gonna lie folks, I really thought I was gonna break something here, but the instructions explicitly state what the height of the arm rail should be at the back of the chair. So I just kept banging until I got there. You know, at this point, I'm quickly realizing why certain woods need to be used for the specific parts of this chair. The wrong species in the wrong place could spell disaster. Now, as if that wasn't scary enough, the vertical arm supports now need to be split with a chisel to make room for the wedge. Fortunately, everything worked out. Now, hands down, the most difficult part of this project was getting the back rail in place. You can see I even needed the help of a clamp. With a little patience and time, I finally had the back rail seated in position. Finally, all spindles are trimmed, split, wedged, and sanded flush. All the other parts of the chair can now be sanded and sculpted to taste. So I know you purists are probably yelling at your screens right now, and I feel your pain. I, I understand your point. 
But a kit like this can be very valuable in certain situations. Uh, just a couple examples. First of all, a new woodworker. Somebody that looks at a project like this and says, I could never build that, at least not at this stage of, of my experience. Um, but I really would love to have one of these. I think I have enough skill. I've got a hammer, I've got a chisel. I think I can put this together. It's a great project. It's just something that's a high, what I consider a relatively high level of woodworking that then becomes attainable because they don't have to worry about all of these little details. And you could just put it together, put your own little finishing touches on it, um, and really have a sense of ownership over something that came from a kit. Kind of like uh, unfinished furniture. You know, it's, it's something that's already built, but just putting that finish on it kind of gives you a sense of ownership over the piece. So I think it's, a, it's an encouraging project that could really get a new woodworker deep into this hobby and realize how awesome woodworking can be. Now, for a woodworker, someone who actually is capable of building this thing from scratch, this is actually still a very valuable thing for you to do. I've never built a Windsor chair before, but I gotta tell you, putting these parts together, these bent pieces, getting everything to go together, and getting the experience of how much pressure it takes how far you can drive those wedges before something starts to crack. This is experience that you just cannot read about. You can't, uh, you can't really even watch a video about and know exactly how much uh, pressure to give. It's something you have to experience. So if I were gonna go and build a Windsor chair myself, I would absolutely wanna do sort of what I would call a dry run like this and get some experience with these pieces and parts to familiarize myself with this process before I go out and build my own. So there's another compelling reason, I think, to get a kit like this and try it out for yourself. So the Riverbend Windsor Chair Kits at Woodworks, check them out. Um, kind of a cool project, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, six hours, and now I got a nice gift for my mom. Thanks for watching.